well, what about the U.S. debt? You know, th- what is it, thirty-four trillion dollars in U.S. debt, and that's going to expand by multiple trillion, likely per year. Um, that's unsustainable. How many countries eventually are going to still be like, yeah, sure, I'll buy your debt, no doubt about it. There's going to be a breaking point where they say, I don't think you're ever going to pay us back. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and these are the Miles Franklin Weekly Specials for February 26th through March 4th, 2024, while supplies last. First, we feature backdated one ounce silver maples at $3.39 over spot. We also have one ounce gold Valcambi bars at only $59 over spot. And finally, we're offering our choice one ounce palladium bars at just $119 over spot. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Hey everyone, this is Elijah K. Johnson with Liberty and Finance. And back with us today is our good friend, Gareth Soloway from verifiedinvesting.com. Gareth, thank you so much for coming back on today. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Definitely a pleasure. Well, it's great to have you today. I would like to touch on uh, the four major markets uh, today. Gold, silver, Bitcoin is breaking out, it seems like, and also the stock market. Um, If we want to start out with gold, though, I know it's been going sideways for about two or three years now, uh, but you're thinking that it could be starting to break out your perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So just looking at the chart, I mean, like you said, it's been sideways now for a long time since 2020. But what I love to show people is that if, if you go back to kind of this period in here in between basically 2013 and 2019 it basically was doing the same thing in fact we can draw a trend line that almost looks identical to what we're seeing and if i zoom out here and we bring this over you can see it's it's very similar in terms of how it was acting and essentially what it was doing it kept on hammering on resistance until it broke out and then when it broke out it went from 1300 and change to almost 2100 you know the highs around 2075 or so Uh, so i think that's exactly what it's doing at this point as well. Um, In addition, I do think that you have to give gold a lot of credit because this, the environment that we're in, it's risk on, VIX is low, S&P all-time highs, NASDAQ at all-time highs, crypto basically almost at all-time highs. This is where a a safety asset like gold should really be crumbling. It should be down significantly, and it's not. I mean, we are literally $50 away from new all-time highs on gold. So I look at that as being very bullish on gold. I also think that the central banks, I mean, one of the facts out there, the data points that central banks continue to load up on gold, yet the individual investor is underinvested in gold. And so for me, I always pay attention. If, If the central banks, the ones that print money, if they're if they're buying gold, I have to pay attention. So all of those kind of factors have me in alignment for a breakout. I think it's going to take a stock market swoon, if you will, so probably like a 10% correction or something. And then that money that will flow from risk assets to gold probably does break gold out and we start to march towards 2,500 an ounce. Now, one of the things that you pointed out is that and a lot of people have been noticing anyone holding gold stocks, gold mining stocks, any of the juniors, they have been severely underperforming gold over the last, especially year here. Why do you think that is? Yeah, so I brought up Newmont Mining's chart here. It's a great example. It has been a horrendous trading vehicle, especially with markets generally that are at near at or near all-time highs. And we can see that Newmont Mining is down to levels that it last saw in 2019 and 2018. And, and really, the answer to this is very simple, right? Is that you know you, we've gone through this period where inflation surged dramatically higher. It's still elevated at three, three and a half percent. Yet gold has not kept up, right? Gold's price has not gone higher than where it was in 2020 when inflation was essentially 1%. And so the poor miners out there, I mean, if you're a Newmont mining company or, or you're one of the other miners, they're paying their employees probably 20% more than they were. Their equipment costs more than they than it was prior. I mean, all of their input costs are higher, but they're not getting 20% more on gold right now. So, so their stocks have suffered, but I do think there's an opportunity here. And I do think that, you know, at some point when gold does break out, the miners will be a catch-up trade and you'll see them surge dramatically higher. Just the question is, when does that breakout occur? But, But it's really that inflation with no advancement in gold that has hurt the miners so much. Now, do you anticipate inflation to come back and that to hurt the miners? Because it seems like if gold is going to be rising, that might signal that we're in for more inflation. 
Yeah, so I, I think it's twofold. So I do think el- inflation remains slightly elevated, but I, but as of now, I'm not thinking it's going to surge back to 10% or anything. And I do think the key here is going to be, can inflation be be basically overtaken by gold's advance? And that's really what's more important. You know, if, if you told me inflation was going to be 5%, but gold was going to be up 15%, then it would be fine. It's the, that we've seen gold go literally 0%, 1% movements over the last couple of years, and that inflation has been probably average averaging for the last two years, about seven and seven percent or so. And I think that's the negative thing. So so if if you if we did see a scenario where gold didn't rally and inflation was still high, then, yeah, it's going to be bad for the miners. But I do think that changes with with the gold starting to break out. And what about for silver? It's been acting more as an industrial metal metal you have pointed out and others have pointed out. What is your perspective on where silver is headed if gold breaks out here? Yeah. So, so number one, we have this long wedge pattern, right? So it basically has told us that since the run from 2020 uh, to the lows to the highs here, where silver went from 11 and change to about almost 30, um, since that point, it's been sideways action, much like gold, right? The only difference with gold is gold has essentially gone flat right like this while silver has been decreasing and you're right that's the industrial side so we have china that's in a big issue fine uh economically right um the u.s we're still wondering are we going to get uh, avoid a so- you know avoid a recession are we going to have a soft landing um but i think that's the kicker here is that silver has underperformed because of places like china having such a such a rough time economically now having said that if gold breaks out silver likely will eventually follow but i do think if the u.s does hit a recession it follows at a a slower pace at least in the beginning Um, generally over the longer term silver has much more volatile moves but i do think in this next phase if the u.s does go into recession like i think it will then you likely see silver continue to lag until we come out of that recession which is when silver should take over now, it seems like whenever often when we see a yield curve inversion, it's after that that we see a recession. And you've pointed this out. Um, we've had a yield curve yield curve inversions for quite a while now. When do you anticipate this recession finally to hit? Yeah, so I, you're right. It's been a really long time. I mean, historically, it's one of the longer times we've had an inverted yield curve. And, and exactly like you said, is it's important for people. People always freak out when the, the inversion occurs. What they don't recognize is that the the recession doesn't hit until it uninverts. And so my guess is, again, later this year, probably second half of the year, I also think it'll happen a lot quicker. Like once we start to see the uninversion occur, it's going to be like a domino effect to the downside. And I do think that, again, the markets will react. We see very much similar situations in the financial markets to what we saw in 2021 before the NASDAQ dropped about 40%, right? We see these stocks like NVIDIA and SMCI and these big players just continuing to soar higher. And even recently, we've seen Bitcoin just today surging up dramatically with people chasing willy-nilly. And again, those are signs of a a financial system that is, is abundantly full of liquidity, but it's also a sign of a top with euphoria. If we can get into that, maybe the stock market at this point, a lot of people have been calling for a melt up and it seems like we might be seeing that right now. Um, In your opinion, how overbought are things getting and what does it spell for uh, times going forward? Yeah, so I, I think the interesting thing here is that the S&P is in this really tight, tight kind of wedge pattern. And we're going to come into that PCE data tomorrow. I think it's Thursday morning uh, that we'll get it. That's going to be the biggest inflation news that we've gotten in a few weeks. And I'm curious to see if the markets break to the downside or break out to the upside. Um, generally, when you get a tightening wedge pattern like this, it eventually price has to go one way or the other. It either has to break down or break out. And so I'm looking for that to happen. I do favor the downside. Needless to say, we are overbought on the S&P. But I also think it's important to recognize that the 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 S and P has what is it eleven sectors? Only one of those sectors is at a new all time high um, from 2020, 2021 highs, and that is technology because of the likes of Nvidia and Microsoft and and Meta and these other ones. So so if you look at the underbelly of the market, it's not a ridiculously overbought market. It's more so specific technology stocks that have now become so huge that literally, if you combine the top five, they're the third biggest by GDP of a country. If they were a country, they'd be the third biggest behind the US and China. It's gotten pretty crazy. It, it has been getting crazy. Now, what kind of downturn do you expect um, if we do see a sell-off here? 
Yeah, so that's going to be the interesting thing. I think we're probably due for about a 10% decline in the short term. Um, buy the dippers are, are programmed now since COVID, even before COVID, to buy the dip. But COVID kind of shook people's confidence because it was such a dramatic drop. But really, since then, every small dip has been a buying opportunity, even 2020. One right, I mean, uh, or the 2022 decline, it, it declined, and then we've zoomed right back to the all-time high. So this programming is in the markets, which means when markets top for a longer period, and I honestly do think that we're in the process of making a multi-year high, not just a one or two-year high, maybe a decade high, like Japan or like the U.S. in the dot-com bubble. Um, I think it's going to take some time for us to unwind this, right? So you'll probably see a dip and then a surge back up, almost to the all-time highs, then another dr dip making a lower low, another bounce, and a lower high again and again. Usually the end of the move, if you go back to 2009, the worst part of the financial crisis for the stock market was that January, February, March of 2009, where we finally bottomed out. It was the final washout. And so that's usually how cycles go. We see that top being more choppy, then the, the rollover, and then the final culmination of that to the downside. So it seems like there's a fundamental shift shift coming then where for the last four decades, right, people have been counting on higher and higher stock prices. Um, but you're saying that it, it we may turn in the stock market may look more like Japan, where it's been how many 30 years or so since the Nikkei has been at these levels. Yeah. And I don't know if I'd go as far to say 30 years. I mean, that seems extreme. But then again, it did happen to Japan. But is it possible that we're putting in levels that we could maybe we won't see? see new highs for 10 or 15, like the dot-com era with the NASDAQ, I do think that is a possibility. And again, it would be a scenario where you've now seen so much money flow into these assets, right? I mean, we hear about just, you know, just keep buying the markets because they inevitably go up and up and people are just automatically putting money to work no matter the valuation. Like there's no fundamentals in this market anymore. And even the technicals are somewhat broken because of the the kind of the greed mentality of just go in, you'll make money no matter what. I do think there has to be some sort of reemergence of 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 kind of, you know, talent in the market where we saw this in crypto in 2021, where people just bought Dogecoin and some of these other crazy meme coins, and they're even doing it now and just making fortunes. That's not sustainable long term. That's good during bubbles, but it's not sustainable. And I do think there has to be kind of this, you know, resetting of the financial system on multiple levels. I mean, we're even talking about government here with the ridiculous debt, the US debt. We're talking about the Federal Reserve with their balance sheet and everything like that. At some point, it has to reset and it's not going to be fun. For all of us out there, it's not going to be a fun period, but it's a needed period. Can you expand a bit more on what you think kind of a financial reset could look like? And then what are some steps that people could um, take now to prepare for that? And like, what are what are you thinking, how it's going to impact people financially? Yeah, I mean, I, I think at this stage, what we what we have is is this kind of culmination of the the drug effect, right? So the market and investors are just so used to, oh, the Fed is always going to be there. They can always stimulate no matter what. And I'm worried that we're going to see an inflation level that's a a little bit on the high side. It's not going to be like 20% at this point, but it's going to be high enough where the Fed can't lower rates to save the day like the markets anticipate, right? So that puts us in an interesting situation. Then you look at, well, what about the US debt? You know, what is it, $34 trillion in US debt, and that's gonna expand by multiple trillion likely per year. Um, that's unsustainable. How many countries eventually are gonna still be like, yeah, sure, I'll buy your debt, no doubt about it. There's going to be a breaking point where they say, I don't think you're ever gonna pay us back. I mean, just like anyone, like a credit card company or, or whoever cuts off your credit, that's the same mentality of when you can't pay them back, they shut off the spigot. And so the reset occurs when that all kind of collapses. And from the ashes of that, there has to be restrictions, right? The government is going to have to have a guaranteed balanced budget or some situation like that. The Fed is going to have to have some sort of metric where they cannot just always manipulate the system to get us out of these minor recessions. In my opinion, the Fed can be used, but it should be used only in the worst case scenarios. But what do we know? We know human nature, like Federal Reserve Powell, he wants to save us from every little scratch and bruise, just like a parent with a child. But how do you really teach the child to be on their own in life? You have to let them fall down a few times. You don't want them to die, but you have to let them fall down, right? So so I think that's where we come from. I, I honestly think crypto plays into that future as well, maybe with a kind of a Bitcoin-ish type backed currency that is only stated run of X amount, or maybe it expands at a very slow amount. And the government, you you can't have politicians controlling, right? It's like it's like the fox, you know, in being being in the hen house. You can't have that scenario because 
politicians want to get reelected every four years or whatever it is. Right. And so they're always going to play for the short term good, not the long term good. And that's not not good to have a short term outlook. And mentioning crypto, I would like to get into that. We've seen a breakout here in Bitcoin nearing all time highs. What are you expecting for Bitcoin going forward here? Yeah, so I mean, at least the surge today, and we're, we've actually had a pretty sharp pullback here on an intraday basis. It was just this crazy flush where we just went from 64,000 down to 58.8. Um, I actually think this is a topping. When you see this type of move, there's called a three bar surge in trading, one, two, three. It usually is the culmination of a short term top. I don't know if it's a long term top right now. But nonetheless, we did also kiss our 60. We got very close to the previous high of 65,000. That's not the all-time high. Remember, we had the high of 65, and then we made the high at 69. But nonetheless, resistance is here. And when you see these really violent, aggressive moves to the upside and downside, it again, it shows you that there's a lot of leverage in the system, right? My biggest concern with crypto is that people are doing, and I'm seeing this on Twitter, I'm seeing this on various other social media pa platforms, they're posting screenshots of them making 130% by using 50 leverage. And that's not good in the system either, right? That has to be washed out. And it's also an, a risk of why you see drops of six. I mean, this this drop here, just from the higher today to the low was basically a 10% decline. And by the way, folks out there watching, that's not what you want to see. If you want grandma to get involved in crypto, you don't want asset prices on something that's a trillion dollars to be jumping up or down 10% intraday. That doesn't mean make grandma or grandpa feel safe about investing their hard-earned retirement money in this asset. So so again, you know, slow and steady is the best thing for Bitcoin. I continue to be a huge long-term bull, but I just think again, you know, just as a swing trader, I would much prefer being short here for a little bit of time looking for a pullback, maybe back to about 50 thousand before that next run can come now your perspective then on bitcoin long term uh, because there are critics out there who say that you know you can't have a deflationary asset be your currency um there are those skeptical about well does it really have intrinsic value what is your response uh to those objections for people saying that you know bitcoin doesn't have a future yeah. So, so, you know, my, my perspective is this, is that intrinsic value is what humans give it. Right. So, so if we, as a, as a society say, yes, it does have value and more people, as long as people adopt that. And what we've seen is more and more institutions saying it is more and more people out there in the world are saying it is therefore it is. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Um, if at some point it, it starts to degrade, then that's a different story. But right now it is to me, it's not a currency. I wouldn't call it a currency, but I do think it's a digital gold or a store of safety. Um, but again, a store of safety or a store of, of value shouldn't have these type of moves. I still think there's a maturity level that has to come in where it kind of matures over the next, let's say, decade and grows into that versus what it is right now is a risk on risk off asset. I mean, if you look at the price action today and what the stock market's doing and what in Nvidia's done. This is this is following that playbook of there's money in the system. It's chasing return in Bitcoin. Um, hopefully, eventually, it goes to more what I think, which is where I would feel more comfortable being in for the longer term, which is just a store of safety where I know if the dollar is getting printed, at least my Bitcoin holds its value against the dollar. And you've talked about how there's those two kind of. Uh, ways of holding an asset, right? Of uh, the long term uh, storage, which you can do, for example, with Bitcoin, as you're saying, or gold and silver, if you have physical gold and silver. But there's also what you do on the daily, on a daily basis of the swing trading. So coming full circle, um, if we could look again at gold and silver, maybe, and if as a swing tra trader right now, what are some of the price points you're looking at um, to signal that gold and silver are going to be making a major move higher going forward? Yeah, sure. So so basically the, the Kickstarter should be a daily close with confirmation above this trend line, right? So we can see we pierced it here and it got rejected. We kind of closed on it. It got rejected. You really want to see a definitive close above. And what I like to see is multiple days above, right? So so if it's a trust a breakout and understand it's not kind of a whipsaw move, you want to see it hold above this level for at least a few days, let's say three trading days. If it does that, I think it starts to draw an attention from from players on the sidelines, institutions, they'll start to chase it and you'll start to see this thing break to the upside. So I think that's that case scenario of what you're looking for. I'm a shorter term. I like to anticipate moves a little bit. So what I like is you have a trend line right here where if you can break above this downsloping trend line, you should at least retest that. And again, a couple other things that I think are are positive on this gold chart dictating a, f a future breakout. One would be what's called a head and shoulders, right? So 
If we look at a head and shoulders, uh, excuse me, an inverse head and shoulders, and you can see right here, this is your head and your middle point, right? And this is a classic pattern formation that again, more often than not, yields to a big breakout with, in, in terms of calculation, you can calculate the target here. It should give us around a 2,525 target, $2,530 target, somewhere in that vicinity. But again, lots of positives here. And again, just going back to what we discussed really early on with gold is that the fact that it's holding up as well as it is in spite of a VIX where it's super low, meaning it's it's risk on with the stock market, with crypto, to me, that's that's the bull case right there. I mean, gold in any other scenario should be down 10, 15, 20 percent from its highs. And here gold is within a few percent of its highs. And as for silver, what are the price points you're looking at right now? Yeah, silver's a little trickier because of that. So, so if you're in, if you're looking at silver, you really do want to see a breakout of this trend line here. Uh, we could see again just a, a line that connects all of these highs all the way down. And so, you're looking for a move above. Really, you want to see it stay above twenty basically $25 for a couple days, that would give you more confidence. And then same thing on the downside, if it breaks here, let's say it breaks below and stays below 2175 for a few days, that would be very concerning that at least you would be dropping to maybe as low as 18 and change. So so again, much different viewpoints. The, the riskier trade is the silver trade. The gold trade to me is the more secure, safer investment at this point, um, at least with the looming potential for that recession in the US. All right. Well, it should be interesting times ahead. Gareth, we really appreciate your time today. If people are interested in learning more about verified investing, where can they go? They can come uh, find me on Twitter at Gareth Soloway. They can follow my YouTube channel or the Verified Investing YouTube channel on, on YouTube. Um, it's awesome. I do the game plan every day. It's a free uh, show uh, going into all the technicals of all the charts on crypto and stocks and commodities. Um, and really come check me out at verifiedinvesting.com. Fantastic, Gareth. Thank you so much for your time and God bless. Thank you, you too. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and these are the Miles Franklin Weekly Specials for February 26th through March 4th, 2024, while supplies last. First, we feature backdated one ounce silver maples at $3.39 over spot. We also have one ounce gold Valcambi bars at only $59 over spot. And finally, we're offering our choice one ounce palladium bars at just $119 over spot. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you.